The thing with animal skulls is like, they're really not that different. This is a dog skull. Notice like the zygomatic's still there, parietal's right there, frontal is right here, nasal's right here. It's the exact same pieces, it's just they're arranged differently or they're in a different shape. Exact same thing, exact same thing. If you go to a cat skull, same deal. Frontal, parietal, nasal, maxilla, mandible. Yeah, they got a bit of a ridge. The cranial portion is a bit longer, stuff like that, right? But it is generally the same. It's not that different. So a crocodile. Same thing. Nasal, the frontal is all kind of here. Bridal's back here, Maxilla's here, but they have slightly different ones. There's like the dentiary, the angular, the juggle, but it is generally approximately the same. It's just, it's a different shape, but all mammals will have the same kind of shape stuff. If you're not too sure what any of those words mean, check them out in our human skull anatomy video. Deer skull will have the same thing. Zygomatic arch, frontal, parietal, mandible, nasal, right? It's all the same. It's just now it's a different shape. The deer skull is actually very fun because this section here, the parietal bone, what it does is it covers the brain. That's the function of it. It is meant to protect the brain. That's its main function. So depending on how big the parietal bone is, that's how large the brain is that it's protecting. So their brains are very, very small. They're just in the back here. So it is the front, the mandible, and the frontal bones that take up the majority of the length of this skull. A bird skull, three maxillary, you got mandibles the same, nasals the same, maxillaries the same, frontals right here, parietals right here, right? Zygomatics right here. So birds are even more similar to, to us, but they also have a jugal bone by comparison to us who don't have a jugal, I don't think. I have a weird want to draw this, so it, I, I'm following my intrusive thoughts as I usually do. I feel like drawing a suit, so that's what we're doing right now. Skulls themselves, like I said in the beginning, are not too dissimilar to one another. Uh, visually, we all have really similar skulls, especially mammals. In my eyes, if you can draw one, you can draw them all, because once you learn to draw one, you realize, oh, the zygomatic is still in the same place, and the mandible is still in the same place, and the frontal bone is still in the same place, so on and so forth. They're all just uh, they're all just stretched to different sizes, but really the baseline anatomy is pretty similar. Antlers can be rough to draw sometimes, especially if you need them at different angles. The trick is to just think of them as weirdly bent cylinders and cones, and suddenly it gets a lot easier. The foreshortening is where most people get a little messed up, including me, and I don't think I did it perfectly this time, but it was good enough. We're already doing a lazier illustration with a very common concept, so I'm, I'm not too pressed about perfection. Just to make it a little more fun, let's make the skull float. I love floating object heads. I'm no stranger to these animal skull characters wearing suits designs. It's not the most original concept, but like if we only tried to be super original all the time, we'd burn ourselves out. So it's it's nice to draw things just because it's fun sometimes. This hand is incorrect and not listening to me. Oh no, it's not large enough actually. It's a little too small there. I'm the type who doesn't like arms or hands to just be at the sides of a character. Gotta have them doing something or it feels stiff to me. Helps give the character some expression or movement. So despite me redrawing the arm here over and over and over, I wasn't about to give up and leave the arm at the side. Maybe I should have pressed on with the hand in the pocket though. Holding a wine glass is pr <laughs> pretty common too. If you'd like to support the channel in the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon. Sometimes when something bothers you, it's good to just like skip it and then like you'll you can fix it later. <laughs> that is what I'm choosing to do with this arm right now. <laughs> I finally decided to look up a reference for the hand holding the tie. Technically, that hand wasn't incorrect, but the angle of the arm was in reference to the hand. So make sure everything is not only correct, but correct together, right? The hand wouldn't be able to bend like that over the tie unless it was a really uncomfortable twist. Uh, so I changed it to the back of the hand facing us more. There we go, that does feel better. Join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists. Get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learn something new, like and share this with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you can check out next.